Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is Sam IT, and I'm going to do a little bit more on the history of IT today with MUDs. What were MUDs? Who's ever heard of this? If you were around at the right time and in the right circles, MUDs were something that you were doing a lot of, most likely. But for most of you, you've probably never even heard the term. And this stands for multi-user dungeon. It's actually a video game, but a video game that was built to be done mostly on the old green screen terminals of yesteryear. Now we did a video about those old CRT-based TTY green screen terminals, but this is a little bit of an aside, but really interesting and worth looking at. There was an era where this was all we had, but we still wanted video games. We still wanted the multi-user role-playing experience that is so popular today, or has been in recent years, MUDs were the very first way to do that. They were multi-user, they were role-playing, they had all kinds of stats and everything you expect from role-playing games, but they were done completely in text, and done so that you never needed a mouse, you never needed anything, you could play directly from uh, one of these old terminals, and they were loads of fun partially because they used so much imagination, uh, but also because there was just so much you could do with them. They were so extensible, uh, and they were extremely popular, especially in the early 1990s when the green screen terminals were very well established uh, and very widely available and were generally the only things attached to the big computers at universities and such that would then be on the internet. So these were the first games that really got widespread ability to be played with other people in other locations. The fact that they were text-based, uh, and that it was like descriptions and very simple commands being sent uh, allowed them to be mostly real-time while still working on the incredibly low bandwidth that was available at the time period. You have to remember that back in the early 1990s, an entire university may have only had a single T1, and again, we're talking about legacy terms here, but a T1 would be 1.544 megabits per second. That's like ridiculously slow by modern standards. Even here in my house where I don't have fast internet, I have 160 megabits per second. And that's just for me. 160 megabits per second per user as opposed to 1.5 megabits per second. That's under 1% for hundreds or thousands of users to share. So the difference in speeds here is astronomic, literally. So if uh, you're dealing with something like this, you need to have video games that are built around handling that scenario, and they worked pretty well. The way it would work is you would sit down and sign in, all from this green screen terminal, right? You would telnet to the, to the IP address of the server, and uh, put in the port, like you actually had to do all this stuff all from the command line, and then it would pop up and say, what's your username? You'd put that in and say, what's your password? You'd put that in, and suddenly it would drop you, and a text description would come up. You're standing in front of a fountain. There's five other people in the room, and you could say things like, say, hello all, and every single person who's attached to that machine that is standing in that room would see you say, hello all. And it was the first time that we were able to have like real, it's like where real time chat really got started. Of course, the chat systems existed technically before this, but this allowed people to have like a real interaction in a casual way through a live chat system. So a lot of instant messaging grew out of these early MUDs. And most of these MUD systems had a way for you to leave mail inside of the game with other people. And so people actually started using this before they had access to their own email accounts, they would use MUDs as a place to email each other. Of course, email did predate this, but mostly only companies had email because it was you had to get an account with someone who had a system, and you, it wasn't like the internet today where you would just go home and sign up with you know Google or whoever and get free email. It was complicated, and most people couldn't get email or couldn't get a casual personal account. But going onto a MUD meant that your character in the game had their own email account in most cases. So you were getting instant messaging as we know it today more or less, and email as we know it today more or less, all inside of this game, which is easily the first time you've ever played a video game online with another person. The so many concepts of things that we take for granted today were first exposed to large numbers of people inside of these old MUDs, these multi-user dungeons, uh, in the late 80s and early 90s. And they were just amazing from a uh, adventure gaming experience because everything was text-based you weren't limited by graphic power like you were for uh, more traditional video games of the time uh, if you go back and look at say like 1990 video games the graphics were generally terrible the gameplays were often really limited the games were short and it, there just wasn't much to them muds gave us the power uh, to have a very, very vast gaming experience, both in the scope and the the uh, 
the experience of the game, but also in having that other people were really playing the game. It was common back then to have a single MUD have hundreds of players online at any given moment. Thousands upon thousands, maybe members of a single server, but you would easily jump on and have three or four hundred people playing on the server with you at any moment. And you could run around and go on adventures together. Many of the things that are now common in online role-playing games. Uh, you could talk to each other. You could have conversations. You could just go to a, a quiet room and just have a chat. A lot of times you may have friends that you made online and that's how you would talk to them. You would just go somewhere and talk. And uh, so a lot of online relationships spawned out of this. A lot of the ideas of uh, modern online dating came from these things. This was a really vibrant, interesting environment that changed a lot of things. But even if you were on the systems alone, they often provided very extensive and original video gaming environments that allowed you to go out and really explore and do fun things in the game. And uh, because the game was so large but alive but had so many users, it allowed for a lot of people to like have stories about their adventures within the game and it became very real, unlike a lot of later video games because of the uncanny valley effect with uh, just graphics in general. Being in pure text made it a lot more like reading a book and you felt much more attached to it uh, because you pictured the voices in your mind. You pictured the locations in your mind. Uh, and because of the way that the MUDs worked and because they were text-based, it was very, very easy for an operator of a server to modify the video game itself to be completely unique. So almost never would you have two servers running the same game. They may run the same code base so that you knew how to work inside the game and how to support it, but the actual game itself, the locations and the characters and the histories and the mythologies and whatever, would have been potentially completely unique or highly unique, and so anyone operating a game had an opportunity to really do a lot to grow the universe. And a lot of times people who became uh, you know, really involved in an individual server would then become additional game creators and create their own content that would go into the game. They might create their own locations and adventures that go on in those locations. So MUDs were really interesting from a technology standpoint, not that they broke a lot of ground directly on their own, almost everything they did someone had done previously, but they took a lot of pieces like early instant messaging and early email and early adventure gaming and online interactions and merged them together into systems that really just gave a lot of people their very first chance to see what uh, all of these technologies could do in the real world. And because of those expectations, a lot of those people went on to be the people who implemented email and pushed for it in a lot of uh, situations, right? These are the people who in 1992 were just discovering it on MUDs, but by 1998 were the ones clamoring that everyone had to have email. And that's how they would communicate. And these are the people who had been using instant messaging in MUDs in 1992. And by 1998, they're like, we have to have AOL instant messenger and things like this. We need to be able to talk to each other in real time, but we shouldn't make everyone go into a game. They helped to drive a lot of that early internet interaction adoption because they had witnessed how well it could work on an old green screen that later when they were using GUIs and stuff on the internet, they had the expectation that those kinds of things would come along with them and need to improve over time. And they did. Now today, MUDs still exist. There are very few running out there live on the internet, but you can track them down and find some, and it might be worth playing, and they have evolved a lot. So don't be surprised if they're not as simplistic as I described them, because people expect that you have modern technologies to connect to them, there's more security, just years and decades of development has gone on. It's been more than a quarter century since I started playing them, so you can imagine just how much has happened over that time. But if you're interested, you can also go get open source or free MUDs uh, of different types. So, you know, there's different engines. You can download them and run them on your own server. Uh, it's definitely not the kind of thing you would generally expect to pay for. And there's a lot of opportunity for you to make a MUD. You can make one that you play with your friends. You can write your own adventures, invite people to come and check it out and uh, explore a world that you create. It can be a lot of fun to do that or just to uh, install one just uh, because you want to explore what things look like and how interactions could have been uh, 25, 30 years ago. And if you watched my uh, green screen terminal video and I talked about easy ways that you could build your own green screen terminal system, you could build one of those, run a MUD on it, and have two or ten uh, little terminal systems that are not networked, that are all serial connected at home, but then have your central server go on the internet and offer that to your friends. You could have lots of people remote and lots of people locally and have little uh, LAN parties and adventure uh, into the game. Uh, which is something that we actually did in the early 1990s, and it was loads and loads of fun. 
people may have different expectations today, but there's probably something a little bit neat about exploring either something very nostalgic for you or something that's just investigating and learning about some history of both computing and video gaming all at once. I hope you enjoyed this little tangent out into video game land, not something we normally carry, but it was so, I think, interesting from a non-video game standpoint, the types of interactions, the idea, uh, and many things like we still say today, when people say they're going into a chat room, that's where the term actually came from. In the MUDs, you could chat with people either through direct messaging or simply have a live, if you use like the, in many MUDs, you'd use the say command and it would simply speak to everyone in the room that you were standing in and they would hear it. The concept of the chat room grew out from MUDs and the terminology remains today, decades later. But no one knows why we call it a room. It just seems like a kind of normal thing to say but there's a real source for it and it's really interesting. So sometimes video games lead technology instead of the other way around. Remember to like and subscribe. Put your comments. I want to know all about whether you're going to play a MUD, whether you're starting to research it, whether you used to play and uh, you have fond memories or how you got killed in a huge battle of player versus player and it pissed you off and you never went back. All that stuff. And if you're Black Rose, my old uh, magic partner who used to uh, slay everyone and you're still watching this decades later, I want to know where you are because I haven't seen you and I don't even know where you came from because we only ever went on slaughtering Rome together. And uh, if you want to sponsor us, you can do so on Patreon. I'll put the link in the description below. This episode of Sam IT has been sponsored by our friends at Talkadillo, the affordable, simple, fully managed, predictably priced VOIP PBX platform. Learn more at Talkadillo.com and help to support Sam IT.